Welcome to Radiology Case Review, Ovarian Dermoid Cyst. I'm Dr. Dan Koval from Radiologist HQ. I'm excited to announce that this episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images that I'm about to show you were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige Ultrasound unit. Let's take a look at the case and then I'll review key teaching points at the end. So we're starting with a transabdominal view of the left adnexa here. There's the urinary bladder that we're using as a window. And there's this large left adnexal mass. It's mixed cystic and solid. And the solid component is composed of these two large echogenic foci. We also see some non-dependent echogenic material that appears to be floating on the more hypochoexistic component, but it appears to be non-vascular. We don't see any internal vascularity there. And it's quite large. It measures at least 10 centimeters in size. Now we're using the transvaginal transducer, and we get a much better look at the internal contents of this dermoid cyst. Here we see that echogenic focus has posterior acoustic shadowing, and then we see these heterogeneous low-level echoes surrounding the nodule, likely representing sebum. But what else do you see? Well, in the periphery of the mass, you see these small little echogenic spherical structures that are floating and piling up on each other. They seem to have no internal vascularity. But these structures are highly specific for dermoid cysts. We also see some dot dash appearance, these hypercoric lines and dots. And again, we don't see any internal vascularity within any part of this dermoid cyst. Now let's take a look at the sagittal cine clip because this gives a great overview of the complexity of this dermoid cyst as I scroll through. Notice how there are actually two of these areas of hypercoic shadowing. We see again a nice look at this heterogeneous low level echoes throughout the mass representing sebum. And then keep your eye on this area as I play the cine clip. These are those floating echogenic spherical structures, very specific for the dermoid cyst. Now we're looking at the transverse cine clip, and you can really see those echogenic spherical structures, those floating balls, much more sharply. You can even get a sense as to why this is sometimes referred to as the boba sign for boba tea. And then as we scroll through here, this is an excellent look at those dot dash, the hyperchoic lines and dots corresponding to hair. All right, now we'll talk about some key points for dermoid cysts, and you can find these in the episode show notes. So these are also known as mature cystic teratomas. So they're the most common ovarian neoplasm, and they're benign. The mean age is 30, and they're 10% bilateral. So if you find one on one side, make sure you look at the other ovary closely because there may be a companion dermoid. And they're germ cell tumors, meaning they have mature tissue composed of two or more embryonic germ cell layers. So that could be sebaceous material, hair follicles, skin, fat, muscle, bone, and other tissues that are lined by squamous epithelium. And the specificity of ultrasound is quite high, 94 to 100%. There are times that we do need MRI if there's changing morphology on follow-up ultrasounds or for postmenopausal patients because there's a higher risk of malignant degeneration of dermoids in the postmenopausal age group. So something to look for on ultrasound would be the floating echogenic spherical structures. Those are quite uncommon, but when you do see them, they're pathognomonic. And they're analogous to the sac of marble sign you might have heard of to describe dermoid cysts in the head and neck. They represent these spheres of sebaceous or keratinoid debris. And they're different from the Rokitansky nodules, which are these hypercoic component with acoustic shadowing, because those are mural nodules that are attached to the wall. Those are non-floating. And a cystic mass with a Rokitansi nodule is actually the more common appearance that we'll see for a dermoid cyst. It can sometimes cause the tip of the iceberg sign where you see an echogenic mass that's shadowing out the rest of the dermoid. And often that's where the bone, the teeth are located in the dermoid cyst. Sometimes you can have hair growing out of the Rokitansi nodule. And again, that hair will look like hyperchoic lines and dots. That dot dash appearance, sometimes also called dermoid mesh. You might also see fat fluid levels because interestingly, sebum and sebaceous material is semi-solid at room temperature, but in the body it's actually liquid. So you could see this floating hypercoic liquid fat. And then you might also get a nonspecific diffuse or regional bright echoes within the dermoid cyst. So those are key features to look for on ultrasound. Complications for dermoid cyst, by far the most common is ovarian torsion. Just like any large mass increases your risk of torsion, so does dermoid cyst. And all the other complications are much less common. So sometimes these can rupture and cause a peritonitis. There can also be superinfection with abscess formation. Rarely in 1-2% to there can be malignant transformation. This is most commonly seen in the postmenopausal age group with degeneration into squamous cell carcinoma. There can also sometimes be hormone secretion, so hyperthyroidism can occur if thyroid tissue is deposited in the mass. And what's that known as when you have thyroid tissue deposited in the ovary? Yes, struma ovarii. <laughs> There can also be virilization, where you have testosterone production by the dermoid cyst, although that's uncommon. What are some other ovarian-related causes of virilization that you might think of? Right, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and then tumors like sertoli Leydig and steroid cell tumors can also cause virilization. Finally, carcinoid syndrome has also been rarely described with dermoid cysts. 
Lastly, there's a phenomenon known as anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis. It's quite rare, but it's an autoimmune encephalitis that can be associated with dermoid cyst, and the treatment is to remove the dermoid. All right, thank you for joining me, and thank you again to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, please subscribe to the video podcast or on YouTube. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, click the YouTube community tab or follow us on social media. Until next time, remember, radiology is life.